You are watching the Michigan Football Report from Chat Sports. I'm your host, as always, James Yoder, and we are going to jump in today to a topic that I personally am passionate about that is back in the news, and that is Josh Gaddis getting a contract extension. He originally signed a three-year deal. He will no longer be contracting or coaching the last year of his contract. So we'll talk about that coming up in a second. But I had this debate with a fellow Michigan fan over the weekend. I'm actually going to ask you guys before we jump into the show. You're going to settle a bet for me. So go down in the comments here on the Michigan Football Report YouTube channel and answer just by just putting their initials there. Gerard Robinson, Chad Henney, John Navarre. I'm not saying either one of those guys is the best quarterback in school history, uh, but the best QB out of those three at Michigan, at their time at Michigan, I want to know. So I'll pin this comment below uh, the video. I want you guys to respond. Now, crazy is enough that this, you know, it seems Denard Robinson is the last quarterback to beat Ohio State as the starting quarterback of the Michigan Wolverines. Chad Henney, four-year starter, started right out of the gate, first game as a true freshman. Never beat Ohio State, right? He uh, he lost all four starts against him. Now, all those weren't his fault. Uh, put up tremendous efforts in 2005, 2006. Uh, his freshman year, 2004, 2007, I wouldn't say were his best outings, but put up two legendary-esque efforts in those years, 05 and 06, or at least good enough in 05. Certainly uh, as good as it gets in 2006 in that one versus two matchup. But John Navarro, let's not forget about him. He left the school with every single passing record in Michigan football history. Touchdowns, passing yards, passing yards in a season, touchdowns in a season, all those different things. I also think he's second in touchdowns in a season, but definitely has the uh, career touchdown uh, passing uh, yard, but he beat Michigan and beat Ohio State in his final year in 2003. Was a three-year starter at quarterback, but I think ultimately he was probably under. Uh, appreciated, over-criticized by Michigan fans while he was a quarterback there. So I'll ask you one last time, and then we'll start talking about this Josh Gaddis situation. Go ahead below, type DR, type CH, type JN in the comments. I am just going to say Chad Henney, despite the fact that he lost to Ohio State in all of his starts. I think pound for pound, best quarterback, put the Michigan offense in another level. John Navarro kind of took him to the next level. Chad Henney, I believe, jumped one level above that. So I was pretty excited to uh, get you guys' opinion and let you know what I thought. So comment below, C-H-J-N or D-R. Before jumping in again, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It is the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. We're not going to sugarcoat things. You're going to hear sloppy Sam Webb and all the blog boys just clapping all they can to have Michigan to have Michigan football team sign Josh Gass to an extra one-year extension. I am not the guy for that. I am not going to say this is a good move. I saw that in an article I read today from M Live, who broke the story this morning. Oh, this is a great move to to, to make uh, you know give. Josh Gass, an extra year, give him more time, have some stability in the program. I don't believe that is. So if you like no sugarcoating, you like news, rumors, recruiting, make sure you subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. It's Mich youtube.com slash Michigan TV. I am your host, James Yoder. Let's jump into today's story for the Michigan Football Report. It is Josh Gaddis getting a contract extension. He originally signed a three-year deal in January of 2019, came over as for only one season as Wide receivers coach slash co-OC at Alabama in the 2019, 2018 season. We all know he wasn't the true OC. He didn't call plays. It was kind of an inflated title. Nevertheless, he was the co-OC. Came to Michigan after a 20-minute phone call with Jim Harbaugh. One year has been added to his contract, so he will no longer be coaching uh, the final year of his deal here in the upcoming 2021 season. He now has a year added to that. Also got $100,000 a year uh, added to his salary in this fourth year. So contract supposed to end at the end of the 21 season. Now it ends at the end of the 2022 season. We'll make a million dollars up from 900000 in the uh, in the 2022 season, also can make $400,000 now in bonuses if Michigan achieves some certain metrics that we'll talk about here in a second. Before I talk about those bonuses and what I think about this contract extension, I want to know your one-word reaction to Josh Gaddis getting a one-year contract extension after two seasons, 19 games in total as Michigan's offensive coordinator. Give me a one-word reaction. I'm just going to say... Surprise is my one word reaction. But I want to know from you guys. Go down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Let's take this to another level. All right. I think Josh Gass deserved to be fired after last season, not extended. And 
Michigan kind of pushed off a lot of other guys, right? Don Brown, I know he was there for four or five seasons. Um, you had Mike Zordich in the secondary was there for six years on the defensive side. Michigan on the offensive side, Jay Harbaugh lost his running backs coach job, you know, coaching job over to special teams and tight ends. Ed Warner, a much more accomplished offensive coordinator than Josh Gass, he got let go. And I actually think that Josh Gass's performance outside of the Minnesota game last year let a, left a lot to be desired. Um one thing I've heard today, people say, well, you've got to lock Gaddis up. You've got to extend him because it's going to hurt recruiting if you have a lame duck head coach or a lame duck offensive coordinator coming into a season. Well, you know what? From my perspective, do you want to know what hurts recruiting? Hurts recruiting is bad QB play. What's hurting recruiting is absolutely no running game under Josh Gaddis as the offensive coordinator in Michigan. What hurts recruiting, in my opinion at least, is having the worst two-minute drill of any team in the Power Five. You guys know it well as I do. When Michigan needs to score late in games and Gas has been the offensive coordinator, they've been absolutely lost. They don't know what to call. They have no sense of urgency. They have no sense of getting back to the line, knowing when to spike it, knowing when to run it, knowing when to throw it. Certainly aren't organized in having the quarterback with two or three plays uh, ready to call depending on the situation. You know what else hurts recruiting outside of having you know coaches in a one-year contract going into a season? How about losing to Ohio State every year? You've been the head coach and I'm you know, offensive coordinator, not even being competitive in 2019 when they played. How about getting blown out, Josh Gaddis, in back-to-back -back years by Wisconsin and not even being in the game for a single second, including the first year of that two-year stretch, 2019, handing the ball off to your defensive tackle inside the five-yard line, trying to be gimmicky when you're on the road playing a top-15 team, ultimately getting blown out because you lost all momentum from that play. How about last year? playing as a 20-point favorite at home against Michigan State, and you're already down a touchdown, having your running back, Hassan Haskins, run the uh, the wildcat play and throw the ball, completely blowing a touchdown opportunity, taking your best players, your quarterback, off the field, having your running back be the guy throwing the ball. I think those are a lot of the reasons, but also your best players on offense are transferring out of there. Giles Jackson, Zach Charbonnet. Xavier Worthy didn't even put on the winged helmet. He's already gone from Michigan's football team. And from a quarterback perspective, Joe Milton, Dill McCaffrey. They were supposed to be the guys going for the quarterback role last year. Milton won it. McCaffrey gone. Wasn't even willing to stick around to play the season, even though it wouldn't hurt his eligibility. Milton plays in four or five games, gets benched, ultimately gets the job back for the end of the season because of injury, etc. Now he's gone. So I think those issues, in my opinion, under Josh Gaddis and, of course, under Jim Harbaugh, which is an extension of Gaddis, they're a lot more impactful to recruiting than this excuse that I've seen all over the internet today that Michigan has to have guys extended because of will hurt recruiting if recruits don't know who their offensive coordinator will be. I'll tell you what, I don't even know who the offensive coordinator is at Oklahoma, at Ohio State. I guess I know who it is at Clemson. Who the hell knows who it is at Alabama? They switch them every year, every other year. It's at, uh, and who's the quarter, offensive coordinator at Alabama now? I can't remember who it is. Bill O'Brien, there you go. Didn't matter. Their coach, Sark, got a head coaching job. So if your offensive coordinator is doing good, you know he's going to be gone anyway. So I have to lock him up for the fact of recruiting, which has been the excuse from all of the media out there covering Michigan football, I think is a very poor one to hang your hat on. But I talked about goals of the contract and this new deal and what Josh Gass will potentially have ability to earn. Let's take a look at him, okay? $100,000 is what he can get earned. Uh, from what I've seen, and I may be incorrect on this, but there hasn't been really clarification. I believe these incentives are for this season, and they're not just for the 2022 year where he was extended. If Michigan finishes uh, in the top two in scoring offense in the Big Ten, he'll get an extra $100,000. If they finish in the top 10 in FBS of all the schools in you know, D1, he gets another $100,000. And if Michigan, for every victory over eight, which seems to be a pretty low bar for Michigan uh, typically, but maybe not this year, he gets another $100,000 up to maximum $200,000. So if they win 12 games, he gets an extra $200,000. I guess that includes the bowl game. So those are the incentives. If you look at Steve Klinkscale's contract we talked about last week, I think that Michigan is kind of getting a little thirsty when it comes to having to have all these incentives just to get coaches to come coach for this program. Make sure if you guys haven't yet, you subscribe to Chat Sports on YouTube. Not this channel here. This is the Michigan Football Report. But I'm going to link down in the description. I'll put it in the comments, kind of reply to that pin comment we talked about earlier. Go subscribe to our main Chat Sports channel. NFL, NBA, college football coverage. If you want to 
holistic view of the world of sports. Want to know what's going on in NBA uh, playoffs, the NFL offseason, and awesome content all throughout the year. This, I'll tell you what, this NBA offseason coming up is going to be a while. It is YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Again, I'll link it below. I'll put it in the comments. Make sure you go over there, support the brand, subscribe to our main channel, YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. All right, so let's keep rolling on this subject. Michigan offensive coordinator Josh Gass extended for a year, and this is a brand new offensive coaching staff in a lot of ways. You've got Sharon Moore, who is now the co-offensive coordinator with Gass, although we all know that as in title only, he's not going to be calling plays. He's not really a huge part of the strategy. Gass is co-OC, wide receivers coach. He kind of keeps those duties. Uh, originally, Michigan had hired a coach to come in, coach wide receivers. Now they're at uh, their safety coach, but nevertheless, Sean Moore takes over for um, a very accomplished offensive line coach. He's never coached offensive line in his career. He's been Michigan's tight end coaches for a while. Matt Weiss. Now, keep an eye out for Matt Weiss. Remember this name. Because if Jim Harbaugh remains coach in 2022 and comes, you know, potentially Josh Geddes does not remain with the program in 2022, I think Matt Weiss is next in line if Harbaugh remains coach but moves on from Gas to be Michigan's next offensive coordinator. Maybe it's Mike Hart. Younger guy, we all know Mike Hart. I certainly don't think it will be J uh, Jim's son, Jay Harbaugh, who has been moved all around, running backs, tight ends, special teams, tight ends, running backs. Now he's a special teams coordinator again and the tight ends coach. So you've got your, your offensive staff on the your staff on the offensive side of the ball. I think Matt Weiss is the one I'm most intrigued about. He's certainly making uh, the second most money behind Josh Gaddis. But with Gaddis getting this extension, I, again, I still think that he should have been fired. He should not have been extended, but nevertheless, that is the news of the day. All right, let me dive a little bit deeper on this topic. As I said, I think he should be fired, not to be extended. I gave you all the reasons why before, but I believe in my heart of heart that Jim Harbaugh made a very reactionary hire in tw after the 2018 season to bring in a spread offense guy, a speed and space guy, went against everything he uh, had been successful with his entire coaching career. and. In my opinion, Josh Gass, despite this one-year extension, is on the hot seat in 2021. If Michigan doesn't turn it around, if they don't find a running game, a passing game, a quarterback that can lead them to a conference title, whether this year or in the future, I think Gass is gone no matter what. So I don't think this extension really matters anything other than just wordplay to give recruits that, oh, wow, Gass is going to be here for the next couple of years. So I'll ask you guys this question to wrap up the show today. Will Josh Gass be Michigan's offensive coordinator in 2022? I want you to go ahead and type Y for yes. Type N for no. I'm going to type my no. I'm going to type my N down below. I don't think he will be. I think Michigan, with what they've got coming back, replacing, what, three offensive linemen starters. Um, obviously, Zach Charbonnet is gone, but you could say Hassan Haskins is back. An underperforming wide receiver core, and you have no idea who your quarterback is going to be at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and type N, but let me know in the comments, will Josh Gass be Michigan's offensive coordinator in 2022?